The Case of the Blackmailer. Thomas Hunt is talking to his friend, Dr. DeLater. I don't mind telling you, Dr. DeLater, that inheriting the Hunt fortune has had its nerve-wracking moments. Do you remember Martin the gardener? A smiling and bowing little man, isn't he? That's the fellow. I dismissed him when I inherited the house in East Hampton. Well, three days ago, he came to my office bowing and smirking and demanded that I pay him a hundred thousand dollars. He claimed to have been tending the spruce trees outside my father's study when Dad drew up another will, naming his brother in Alaska as sole heir. You believed him? I confess the news hit me like a thunderbolt. Dad and I had quarreled over Veronica sometime during the last week in November. Dad was very opposed to my marrying her, and it seemed plausible that he had cut me off from the inheritance. Martin said that he possessed this second will, which he felt sure would be worth a good deal more to me than he was asking. As it was dated November 31st, the day after the executed will, it would be legally recognized, he claimed. What did you do? I refused to be blackmailed, but then he tried to bargain, asking 50000 and then $25,000. You paid nothing, I hope. You can bet I paid nothing. I just kicked him out. You certainly did the right thing. Imagine trying to peddle a tale like that. What was Martin's blunder? 